thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, my name is Gulis Tunjai. I'm a PhD student at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And uh, today I'm going to present you our work on Android Web Security titled Draco, a system for uniform and fine-grained access control for web code on Android. This work was done in collaboration with my colleague Soters Dimitri and my advisor Carl Gunter. So mobile platforms offer developers many tools for creating better applications and for improving user experience. One good example to this kind of tools would be embedded web browsers. Uh, these are web containers for displaying web pages within the context of an app so that you don't have to start a heavyweight, full-fledged web browser. So the picture that you see on the left is an example to this. It's the BBC app pulling a web page from the bbc.com domain uh, with an imp interesting picture of Donald Trump. Uh, uh, and uh, it's using embedded web browsers to do this. So currently, 90% uh, about 90% of the apps on uh, Google Play Store use uh, embedded web browsers called uh, WebView for the Android platform. And other than simply displaying web pages, there are some interesting use cases to embedded web browsers, such as for displaying advertisements. So sometimes in applications, you will see these rectangles even uh, flashing and showing you uh, some advertisements. So these are typically web views. And other than that, uh, it might sometimes be the case that the app has an uh, accompanying website to it, as it's the case for the BBC example here. It has bbc.com. And uh, in this case, the app developer may choose to use their uh, content from their web pages to avoid uh, platform-specific programming. And uh, there are also hybrid frameworks out there that uh, allow developers to use JavaScript and HTML to make their apps. And uh, these frameworks rely on uh, web views uh, to uh, render application code written by the app developer. And uh, so in this work, our focus is on the Android platform because it's easy to investigate and it's open source. But uh, the general idea and the approach here that uh, can be applied to other platforms as well. Uh, so um, in order to provide a better and more customized experience, WebView allows for tight coupling of uh, web code with application code by providing JavaScript bridges to the web code. So there are two types of JavaScript bridges. Uh, first one is JavaScript interfaces. Second one is event handlers. So ja with JavaScript interfaces, you can expose your whole uh, Java classes and their methods to a web code. And with event handlers, you can override the functionality of some of the JavaScript calls, it, uh, such as confirm prompt and uh, alert. And uh, so using these bridges, web code gets direct access to application code and can more closely interact with it. So this app code here is basically your regular Java, Android Java code, and it can do anything from uh, implementing some functionality to use the camera to uh, uh, exposing uh, private information of the user. Uh, and um, other than the JavaScript bridges here, uh, there is also HTML5 APIs. And uh, through these APIs, web, web code gets uh, access to device resources. And um, in order to be able to use this, uh, the app developer needs to implement HTML5 callbacks. And um, so of course, exposing uh, internal app code and uh, device resources is very powerful. But uh, it can create significant uh, privacy and security issues if this is not used carefully. Uh, so um, when the app developer makes use of the JavaScript bridges, uh, their assumption is usually that the domain that's running in the web view is the app's own domain. And, uh, but uh, the problem here is that it's very easy to break this assumption because first of all, even though the page might be coming from the app's own domain, it can have iframes in it that are not coming from this domain. Or uh, WebView also intrinsically allows for navigation, which means that the user can click on the links on the WebView uh, on the page and uh, navigate themselves out of the trusted domain here. Uh, so um, the, the user needs to be uh, unknowingly cooperative in the second case here. But uh, in either of these cases, uh, once the trusted domains are running in the web view, uh, they can as well access the JavaScript bridges just like the app's domain uh, was doing. 
And uh, the problem here is that the origin information is not propagated to the application code uh, uh, through the JavaScript bridges. So you can't do access control here because you don't know who did the invocation in the first place. So uh, our goal here is to uh, bring access control uh, system to WebView. So in the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk about the prevalence of WebView and its APIs to show you how critical this problem is. Next, I'm going to uh, show you some interesting applications that we found to be vulnerable to this uh, problem. Uh, and next, I'm going to talk about our system, Draco, that implements access control for web views. As a part of Draco, we introduced Draconian policy language to be able to write uh, uh, policy rules for uh, expressing uh, access to origins. Uh, access, yeah, expressing, assigning access char characteristics to origins. And uh, we also implement our system, Jayco Runtime System, which enforces the policy rules. And uh, finally, I'll talk, talk about the performance of our system. So let's see how prevalent uh, WebView and its APIs are uh, in the current applications in uh, Google Play Store to really understand the extent of this problem. So here you have a data set of about uh, 1,400 applications that are selected from 21 categories in Google Play. These are the top apps in their respective categories. And if you uh, look at the first uh, top bar here, you can see that WebView is used by about 90% of the apps in our data set. And uh, also most of the applications, again, about 90% of them enable JavaScript. And uh, if you look here, these are the JavaScript bridges, uh, the JavaScript interfaces and event handlers. You can see that the interfaces are used uh, by more, about 70% of the apps. And uh, again, more than 50% of the apps are uh, using the event handler uh, JavaScript bridges. And like I said before, uh, you can't do access control because the origin information is not propagated through the bridge, so uh, these are, uh, potentially vulnerable. Uh, and um, next, uh, if you look at the, H the use of HTML5 APIs here, uh, you'll see that it, they, those are not used as commonly as the JavaScript bridges. And uh, the thing to note here is that uh, the operating system in this case provides origin information to the application code. So if you want, you can do access control, but if we are to introduce an access control system, there is no reason why you should not include these HTML5 APIs in your system, uh, because if you don't, then it's, it's going to be ad hoc and also burdensome for the developer. So we need uniformity here. And uh, other than our prevalence study, uh, we also investigated some of the apps in our data set and found some interesting cases where apps are vulnerable due to the non-existence of access control uh, for WebView, despite the effort of the developers to protect their apps. So we, we observed that in some cases, the app developers are actually aware of this problem and they try to evade it uh, uh, by uh, implementing some policies of their own, but you can, uh, it's actually very burdensome and it's also inefficient and ineffective for the uh, developer. And uh, so here we have the CVS Caremark app, which is downloaded about 500,000 times. It helps uh, users track their prescription history, get refills, check uh, drug interactions, and so on. And uh, we reverse engineered the, the code of this app and saw that uh, the app uh, makes use of two different JavaScript bridges with, two, uh, with different access characteristics, uh, meaning that one of the interfaces is not exposing anything critical to the web code, but the other one is, the second one is exposing a lot of things, uh, such as user's name, email, their location, uh, their preferred pharmacy, as well as some functionality to use the camera to scan barcodes of uh, prescription drugs and uh, retrieving the image of that uh, last scanned uh, dr drug. So um, if you look here in the picture, uh, You'll see that even though I said this is the CVS Caremark app, you'll, uh, it looks a lot like the Twitter website here uh, because this is uh, actually Twitter. We were able to navigate the app out of its CVS domain uh, to the Twitter website here, and we posted a link to our uh, malicious, uh, malicious uh, JavaScript uh, that uh, 
that is trying to exploit the existing JavaScript bridges here by a very simple code like this. Uh, so what this code does is it gets the geolocation uh, location of the user, it's, it gets their username, preferred pharmacy, uh, invokes the functionality to scan uh, barcodes and then retrieves the last scanned image and sends all of this to a server. And after this, it uh, changes some of the existing settings of the user, such as their preferred pharmacy without the user knowing. So uh, what happened here is that we were able to exploit the existing JavaScript uh, bridges without being noticed. And so uh, to, solve the, the, to solve the problem of uniform access control for web code, uh, we introduced Draco, fine grain, and uniform access control for web code. Uh, so contrary to what you might have thought, we didn't name our system after Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter because we wanted to be clear that our system aims to protect the muggles from evil web code, which is something he would never do. So we named our system after the good guy, Draco, uh, who is the first democratic legislator in history, uh, unfortunately known with his uh, strict laws, but we tried to be a little more lenient than this guy in order not to upset people. So uh, what Draco does is, it does fine grain and uniform access control. Uh, so some of the previous work actually had focused on uh, protecting JavaScript bridges only when they're used uh, in hybrid applications for exposing device resources. But uh, these solutions obviously don't apply to native applications that use uh, web views. Uh, and uh, there are also solutions out there that implement access control for uh, some of the access channels, but not all of them, so they're not uniform. So our argument here is that uh, this problem isn't specific to hybrid applications. And all types of apps that use web views should be addressed, and uh, we should also do this in a unified, unified way for all access channels. And uh, using Draco, what you do is origin-based access control, so you can ac uh, assign uh, access characteristics to different origins as you like. And uh, we try to be a little more flexible than the draconian laws. And uh, we try to bring some middle ground uh, into the game here. Uh, we don't just uh, block unknown domains. And uh, we give the developer the, uh, uh, we allow the developer to write uh, fine-grained rules on what they want to expose and how they want to expose to, uh, to these unknown domains. And we also provide the developer the option to consult with the user in case they can't make the decision in advance. So uh, implementation, uh, previous work had relied on uh, changing the operating system to implement whitelisting for origins. However, uh, recent changes in the implementation of the Android web we allowed us to avoid uh, changing the operating system here. So what currently happens is that the, uh, the web view API is in the Android open source project, but the back end of it is actually in the Chromium, which is a system application on Android. It runs as a system app. And so all of our implementation resides in the system application. Uh, which makes Draco uh, easy to deploy because now all you need to do is an update to the system app. You don't have to update the operating system anymore. Um, so our trick here is to take advantage of the existing uh, load URL web view API uh, to piggyback rules into the Chromium implementation. And uh, so we, uh, so normally this API is used to load the web page uh, given in the argument here, but we changed the behavior of this a little bit. Uh, we allow the developer to tag their policy rules with the policy rule tag here, and then we interpret it differently in the implementation. And uh, if you didn't have to do this, you'd have to extend the, either the WebView API or the Android manifest file structure, both of which would, would require changes to the operating system. So uh, as a part of Draco framework, uh, we introduced Draconian policy language uh, for the developers to e express access characteristics uh, they want to assign to origins. And a uh, rule looks like this in uh, DPL. You have a subject, uh, which is basically a web origin, HTTP or HTTPS, column slash slash, and then you give it your domain. And as a channel here, I mentioned three different access channels, JavaScript interfaces, HTML5 APIs, and event handlers. And uh, we also have a decision point here. Either it's the system that can make the decision 
or you can ask the user if you like. So the, the uh, uh, channel part of the rule looks a little different for each type of access channel here. For JavaScript uh, interfaces, what you do is you expose your Java classes uh, to web code. So here in the rule, you have a class name, name of the class you want to expose, the list of the methods that you want to expose, and the permissions that you want to give to this specific subject here. For HTML5 APIs, though, uh, you only expose device resources. So for this, you only need to list the permissions. For event handlers, uh, you need to list uh, the name of the event handler method that you want to expose plus the list of permissions again. Um, so given uh, this structure for the policy rules that we have, uh, how would we go back and fix the CVS uh, care mark example here? Um, so like I said before, uh, the app was making use of two different JavaScript interfaces with different access characteristics. One of them was exposing a lot of things. And for that one, uh, a rule look, could look something like this. Uh, you would specify the origin as caremark.com, the CVS caremark domain. And then next, uh, you give it the, the name of the class that you want to expose, which is WebView JavaScript interface in this case. And then you say, I want to expose all methods of this class, and I want to give this uh, domain uh, geolocation and camera permissions, which are the only two permissions uh, required uh, for this class. Uh, and um, finally, you set the decision point as the system. And there, there is also the second interface that wasn't exposing anything critical. And uh, for this one, uh, you could write a rule that looked like that. Uh, so you could say for any origin that wants to use this JavaScript interface uh, class called JavaScript Bridge, all, for all methods of it, uh, you can ask the user. And we also provide the option of uh, 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 writing uh, a description for, uh, for this uh, for the prompt screen for the user so that the user knows uh, what they're accepting or not accepting. And uh, so architecture, uh, how does it look like? So what happens is that when the app developer uh, makes their app, uh, they will put uh, their draconian policy rules into the app using the load URL uh, web view API and uh, tag their rules with the policy rule tag here. And then they will ship their app. Uh, the user will go to Google Play Store, install the app, and there you have the app now. And uh, like I said, we implemented our uh, system in the Android System Web View app. So and, and in this, we have two, two components that we implemented. The first one is the static analysis module, which uh, takes the APK file of the app under investigation in this case, uh, and then decompiles it and statically analyzes it to find out the policy rules entered into the implementation. Uh, and uh, the reason that we do is to find the permissions that are used by the exposed class here. And we do this because whenever there is an invocation coming from a, from a domain, you want to see what uh, permissions that you, you assign to this domain and what permissions that you require to operate the method there. And if they match, only then you allow the invocation to go through. So this is why we do static analysis. And the second part of the implementation is in the Chromium library itself. So what happens is whenever, whenever you use a web view in your app, uh, uh, the Chromium library gets uh, loaded into your app from the system web view app here. And then in this library, we implemented a policy manager class that has, a, has an information unit in it uh, to keep track of the developer policy, uh, policies as well as the, the, per, uh, the output of the static analysis with the permissions for each class and their methods. And we have a parsing module which gets executed at app start time. And uh, it will parse the, the draconian policy rules entered by the developer and the analysis of the static, uh, static, static analysis module and enter these into their respective maps. And the third part is that uh, we have an enforcement module which uh, implements uh, hooks for all the three channels that I mentioned here. And whenever there's an invocation, uh, the enforcement module will ask uh, the information unit to see if uh, there's an existing rule that allows this invocation to go through. And if that's, that's the case, uh, it gets executed. 
and there can also be cases where uh, you would ask the user to make a decision for you. So enforcement, uh, so cr Chromium uh, has this multi-process architecture with a render for each tab that you have and a browser that uh, talks to all these renders. Uh, so the, the code structure is the same for Android, but the difference is that it's not multi-process anymore, so it's actually not using the Chromium IPC here. And uh, since browser is the central place of control, we implemented enforcement in the browser here. And uh, so I'm going to explain how uh, enforcement works for the JavaScript interfaces, but it's actually very similar for all three channels. So what happens is when you want to expose a Java class, this, uh, this Java class gets wrapped into a V8 object here. V8 is the JavaScript engine of Chromium. Uh, and whenever there's an invocation on this uh, Java object, uh, the render queries for this object in the JavaScript engine, finds the reference to it, returns this back to the browser. And the browser also needs the origin information, so it gets that from the render here, and then it's able to make an access control decision. And uh, if, if it's a yes, then it, uh, the method will get, will get executed. So uh, the performance, uh, let's start with the static analysis here. What you need to do is you need to analyze the classes associated with the policy rules uh, to find out the permissions used by their methods. And here we have three categories, a small class with five methods, medium class with 10, a large with 15. Each method is using five permissions, which is actually not, uh, uh, which, which basically shows the worst case scenario here because it's not, it's not usually the case that a method will be using five permissions at the same time. So, uh, so you can see that the, the runtime is uh, in the order of seconds. And uh, so this is one time and we do this only during app installation time, so uh, this might be affordable. And uh, so next uh, performance of parsing. Uh, we have three cases, parsing the developer policies, uh, two cases, uh, parsing the uh, developer policies. Let's start with that one. Uh, so we have a policy uh, that looks like this, uh, a class uh, that is exposing five methods. And uh, there is a large policy uh, with a class with uh, 15 methods being exposed. And uh, you can see that uh, these are all in the order of milliseconds, and this is actually linear time. Um, and uh, we also have a semantically large policy rule that I was using in the CVS example. Uh, this is actually constant time, and again, in the order of milliseconds. And uh, for parsing the output of uh, permission uh, uh, static analysis, we have two cases again here, small class with five methods, large class with 15, and again, everything is in the order of milliseconds. and. Uh, so this is all paid at the app start time, uh, which is shown to be in, uh, about on average five seconds, according to previous work. So uh, everything that we show here is in the order of milliseconds, so this is negligible compared to those uh, five seconds. So for enforcement, we have three channels. Uh, for all channels, uh, you can see that the runtime is less than a millisecond, uh, so it's uh, negligible again. So uh, in summary, uh, we, ha we introduced Draco, fine grain and uniform access control for WebView. As a part of Draco framework, we, in uh, we introduced Draco in policy language that is easy to use with uh, one-line rules. And uh, we, in uh, we implement our system, uh, our enforcement uh, in Chromium, uh, Chromium system app, so hence there is no uh, modifications to the operating system, and this is easy to deploy. And finally, uh, we show that our system is effective and efficient. Thank you. Yeah, we have a time for a few questions. Hey, come on. I don't want to be, be the only person who asks a good question. <laughs> All right, I'll ask a question. Yep. Uh, thanks, nice talk. Thanks. Um, so I was wondering, uh, the static analysis, um, yep. so did you, how, how accurate is that in terms of you know, false positives and false negatives for finding these permissions? Is it, is it hard to do that? Um, we didn't really check for that currently, yeah. And the, um, now you, you, 
in this model, you trust the developer to yes. specify the policy. Yeah. So I was wondering, I guess, in terms of this big startup time for doing this static analysis, yeah. it seems like that's something you can do once per application. Once per app, yes. Not even once per installation, but you could sort of create a manifest or exactly. something like that. Exactly, a file and you store it somewhere. Okay. Yeah. But you haven't done that yet. You, but you, uh, you have what you do done you mean? that yet? What, what's that? How, do you already do that? Or do you pay, expect that to be paid currently in your current implementation on the Current implementation in the app start uh, app installation time once, yeah. Okay. But yeah, it can be implemented like you said. 